Discover unbeatable deals and convenience at your neighborhood Family Fair supermarkets. Score exclusive deals, earn rewards, join clubs, and clip digital coupons for extra savings all in one place. Our exclusive offers bring savings straight to your card. Explore a wide range of local products that support your community. With easy pickup and delivery options, saving time and grocery shopping has never been easier. Family Fair is all about making your grocery experience easy and affordable at your one-stop shop for all your grocery needs. Family Fair in your neighborhood. Come ring in the new year in Denver. Celebrate with parties, champagne toasts, live music, and dazzling fireworks. Plan your celebration and find great hotel packages at milehighholidays.com slash NYE. If you really like this episode, please support our podcast by going to patreon.com slash true crime wives and get lots of great extras. On the Good Wife's Guide to True Crime, we discuss crimes that some may find disturbing. Listener discretion is advised. With no home and Gypsy Rose battling both muscular dystrophy and leukemia, the St. John's Aurora team went to work securing this rent-free home for the family and cleaning it up. It is overwhelming. It's... You can never dream it in your wildest dream that so many people would just so generously come and help us and love us and just welcome us. For Gypsy Rose and her mother, the move brings a sense of security, a new town, and a new home that has welcomed them with open arms. It just proves that happy endings are not just in fairy tales. They're real and true in real life also. They couldn't drag me back to Louisiana kicking and screaming. I'm here to stay. We're home. So we're finally getting to the end of this medical journey, but because there is so much insanity that goes on in Missouri, we had to break it up into three episodes. So that way you don't tune us out after talking so long. Missouri is where we really felt things started to become clear to us as what was really going on. Now the medical files will never make sense to anyone, but it really becomes clear that Dee Dee and Gypsy are in full swing here in Springfield. It's truly staggering the amount of fraud that takes place in this case, from the medical files to the defrauding of an entire community, and to the charities Dee Dee didn't seem at all bothered by taking their money that could have been helping really sick kids. This is a time period of big rumors and even bigger questions where this case is concerned. And in our investigations, we have even uncovered some different things that while not specifically dealing with Gypsy and Dee Dee, it is extremely relevant to the case. So come with us on this leg of the journey as we explain Gypsy and Dee Dee's medical history in Springfield. folks, it's time to grab your glass of wine because the good wives, Fancy, Colleen, and Christina are about to serve up another true crime case. to Missouri and we're going to start talking about the medical history in Missouri. We've we've kind of talked a little bit about Gypsy and Dee Dee as they arrived, but now we're going into the medical stuff. And I really think the medical stuff moving into Missouri is vastly different, don't you think guys, from what oh, yeah. there is in Louisiana? 
it's a huge difference. It and it's not necessarily that she's going under completely different uh, tests or surgeries, though she is. But it's that there's it just gets strange with different names being used, different birth dates. The documents start to become very muddy in that yes. the doctors don't even know what they're talking about anymore. Right. You know, they're calling her 16 when she's really 21. Mm-hmm. And you putting in the notes that the, uh, mom brought in the real birth certificate <laughs> oh, God. to identify that there was a typo error. Just stupid. It, Mostly just, just yeah. stupid. It's really stupid, and I, it, it does not speak well for doctors, let me tell you. It doesn't. It does not speak well for doctors. This is, this case is, like, everyone's, like, conspiracy theory wet dream. Like, they're like, you know what, that Gypsy Rose girl, they, I mean, literally, they could write an entire whole thing of a conspiracy theory on Gypsy Rose Blanchard and her medical history, like, you know. It, it's just wrong, to say the least. But then there's a lot of repeated normalcy in yes. the test results. Yes. And things being charted, even though they just were. And the doctors will even write that they uh, say that she was tested for this, you know, and then she's back again to do, read the test results. Test results are normal. But then they'll write it in their note that this is a 14 year old girl with epilepsy even though her mri and eeg were normal normal so it's just dumb yeah normal it's not as serious normal is the is the key word in all of this it it pops up over and over and over again in these tests and i i i say it later in the in the episode i'm sure where i'm talking about you know that normal may not mean what you, what you think it means because obviously it does it is not it, i just think that normal is a word that's used quite a bit in these files that it, I, hmm. I wonder if the doctors actually know what normal means but i, it, oh. I don't yeah it's just so strange how everything everything was normal but everything everybody just continued to go with the flow and keep testing keep admitting her to a hospital and everything yeah. just kept coming back normal. Keep operating, you know, keep prescribing medications. medications. And, yeah. and, and here's the thing we have sat with this for over three years now. And guys, if you hear us laughing, if you, if you hear us joking around about it, it's, it's simply out of sheer, I think frustration and disbelief at this point that that this has been able to go on. And so sometimes I think we laugh because I don't want to cry. Like yeah. I, it, we would have gone crazy a long time ago if we didn't have a way to kind of get through this in a way of looking at it of like, this is absurd. I've never seen anything like this. And I'm going to laugh because if I don't, I'm either going to be rocking in a corner crying for this, for what happened or I'm going to go take law, the law into my own hands. Like, seriously. Right, because we don't spend our free time watching, like, Love Actually. No. And painting our nails and just having fun. We right. spend our free time studying this case. And there's only so much more that we can really have feelings about this case other than disappointment, disbelief. upset, Absurdity. disbelief, <laughs> or just just laugh. That's yeah. all we can do anymore. And if you f- feel like we're kind of saying the same thing over and over again, it's probably because we are. We are, yeah. Because I mean, it could be a whole new year, different month, year, but I'm still probably going to tell you that it's normal and everything we're gonna repeat ourselves oh. again or the using the same words repetitively right. like strange normal because there's <laughs> only so many words in the english language to describe the same thing well this case is the epitome of same shit different day yep mm-hmm. and it okay. goes on year after year, year after-, after year i mean 23 years of this bullshit 
from doctors that should have known better. I'm sorry. I'm calling a spade a spade. You should have known better. Don't go anywhere. The Good Wives will be right back. In every episode, we like to serve up a special dish from the state that our crime takes place. So here's our resident Cajun Mama Thai to tell you what our true crime dish of the week is. my goodness let me tell you about this recipe i've chosen for today hey guys it's me cajun mama Ty, with another recipe of the day now that the good wives have moved from their research in louisiana and headed into missouri i decided to do some research myself as you all know i am from south louisiana and yes this is my accent this is my accent i wanted to find a recipe to go along with the place we were going to visit so i dug up a story about two brothers their names were Li long and Guy, who in the early 60s founded founded of uh, the first chinese restaurant in missouri together they created awesome dishes but the one they are most famous for is the recipe i've chosen for today springfield cashew chicken we'll hear more from cajun mama Tai and all about her the springfield cashew chicken later on but right now we're going to get to medical 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 of Gypsy Rose Blanchard in Springfield, Missouri, with me, Fancy, Christina, and Colleen. On 1-5-2007, Gypsy was seen in the St. John's Emergency Department for a change of her Mickey feeding tube. Didi actually brought in the home change button kit to the emergency room, requesting that they did it for her. This is a very uncommon practice. Parents of a sick child are usually taught right when the tube is put in how to change out that button. The first tube change when D Gypsy was a child would have been th done by a doctor, but every subsequent tube would have been done by a parent. But Gypsy's entire life, she went to an emergency room or in the clinic to have her button changed. While she was there, Dee Dee also requested for Gypsy to get pain medications, including Tylenol, despite Gypsy reporting that she wasn't in any pain. And there was no subsequent admission. Her vitals were just fine. It had, in the note, they had said it had been a year since her last button change. And those usually should be changed every three to four months. So is this the first record that we have in Springfield? Yes. So we have a gap between 2005 and 2007. Yes. <coughs> I think I might have more documents, but I believe this is, there's a big gap. And I don't know if that was when they were in the Hope you know, when they were in Florida. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, there's a, definitely a gap. Well, it could have been, I mean, okay, so if there's a definite gap, that would have accounted for not being in Springfield and being in Aurora. Yes. Um, and before they, because they didn't get their Habitat house until 2007. So they were in, they were in Missouri for two years before that. Yeah, so I don't know whether... And, and we don't have anything from August 2005 to, to, to until January of 2007? Correct. Wow. That's interesting. 
I don't even want to know where she took this girl. Or if she was just fine. And then when they got the Habitat house, they had to pretend that she was sick again. Well, no, I know that's not true because um, the whole reason she ended up there was she got airlifted out because a doctor was down at the Superdome, found them, found her gypsy story and arranged for her to come and be there. That was when she was in the hospital for a long time, though, wasn't it, Colleen? Yeah, she was in the hospital for a good few months. Um, Maybe that's what it is. Right, because I don't know if her her 2005 document is that really long admission, and we didn't. I think we talked touched on that that we didn't have the discharge date mm-hmm. when we recorded yeah. about uh, yeah. Ms., uh, Louisiana. We ended right in 2005 at Hurricane Katrina. Okay, and so I think we just didn't have the discharge date after the flight. Huh. Interesting. When was she in the <laughs> hospital for months? When she was airlifted. Oh, okay. Um, they sent her directly to a hospital and they just admitted her and she was there. And never I while think... she was there for months did anybody realize like there's no reason for this girl to be here. Nope. It's crazy. Oh my God. See, that's one of the things I've had a hard time with was like, okay, I get when she goes to the doctor and her, her mom says, whatever, 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 you know, and this is what's happening at home and they can't verify it or anything. But when she's in the damn hospital, I do not understand because when she's sleeping, her legs have to move. When she is there, they, her mom has to go home. She can't be there 24 hours a day with her. Um, so that's where I don't understand because there were opportunities there for her to either be observed and questioned or for her to herself say something. Say something, yeah. I. This is where the documents start changing in the terminology because our last document from Louisiana, it was that she had unspecified muscular dystrophy. So her right. legs necessarily didn't have to be paralyzed. But when we start getting into 2007, that's when they start using the paraplegia. So I believe that while she was in the hospital, it was, you know, that she could move her legs a little bit, but she can't walk. Okay. And then it once she's out of the hospital, they start using the, oh, she's paralyzed. Interesting. Because she doesn't have very as much admissions. Usually ha- she is admitted for same day or overnight just from eye or dental surgery. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And then she gets, you know, discharged the next day. So there's not that prolonged observing of her movements. Sure. Um, but I, I struggle with that too, that for those three months that nobody, all those tests that were run were normal and all the scans that were done were normal, but they continued to hospitalize this girl. Right. And like, and like I said, I mean, there would have been times that Didi would not have been there. I mean, cause I, I mean, I don't know, maybe she was, would it have been an option for her to sleep on, 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 uh, in the hospital? And like, would they, cause I know when my mom was sick, um, in hospice, they had a, they had like a chair that folded out for me so that I could stay overnight, but they didn't have, you know, I, I know that when my mom was in the actual hospital, I was not allowed to stay overnight in the hospital with her. Well, um, is that different because she's a child? Yes. So usually, especially in a children's hospital, siblings can't stay the night, but parents mm-hmm. and grandparents can. So okay. Dee Dee would have probably and most likely been at her side 24-7. Sure. Well, sure. the last two hospitals sense. that my mom was in and was admitted in, there were no visiting hours. You could come and go as you please. Her her roommate actually had the whole family there for the night. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. Wow, so as long as nobody else complained and you were quiet, it, they didn't, there were no visiting hours. You could just come and go as you wanted to. Mm-hmm. And it depends on the department. ICUs typically have a open door policy. Right. Versus floors usually have like an eight to eight rule, but parents can stay the night. Okay. Um, okay. So it just depends, but most likely Dee was there. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. But I mean, she still, there had, I'm sure there were periods of time where she went to the cafeteria or, you know. Right. I think it must have been like put four different blankets over your legs and try not to move while I'm gone. 
and yeah I can, I can see that I can I yeah and okay. looking at images from different hospital stays you can tell she's got a ton of pillows and stuffed animals on the bed yeah mm-hmm. which would then kind of camouflage her things yeah. yeah yeah definitely okay so well that makes sense I guess I mean it doesn't make sense let's just be honest <laughs> nothing nothing makes sense it's not gonna make sense it's never gonna make sense to anybody but in the realm of this making sense, that makes sense with inside this crazy cuckoo well, bullshit. Well, the next, <laughs> yeah, a little bit. This next document, I'm two documents I'm going to show you or discuss is does it make sense at all? And the outpatient visit for the cardiac center on four three zero seven was just mm-hmm. a cardiac center visit. Um, Dee Dee had said that Gypsy had a heart murmur, but through the testing showed that she did not, and she was able to go home. Whether that was not enough hospitalization and hospital visits for Gypsy that week, later that week she goes to the ENT, and this is the 4907 visit, where they have to replace those T-tubes. Again, this is the third or fourth time that the T-tubes have fallen out and they... Woodhouse Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram is bringing you more this holiday season. Finishing the year with big savings on the entire model lineup during the Wrap Up the Year sales event. Save up to $13,000 off MSRP on a 2024 Ram 1500 Crew Cab Laramie 4x4 for qualified buyers. Explore all our year-end lease and finance deals at WoodhouseCDJRBellevue.com or WoodhouseChryslerJeepDodge.com. This is Woodhouse. With approved credit, tax title, license, extra. When financed with Chrysler Capital. $299 dot fee to its signage. Stock number BC24134. Offer expires 1231-2023. See dealer for details. Treat your party host with a high V party tray. From meat, cheese, and charcuterie boards to shrimp and seafood trays and everything in between, High V has the perfect signature platter to make your event extra special. And make sure to check out the chicken wing trays if you want a real crowd pleaser. Shop in store or online at high-v.com. That's high-v.com them back in and as i discussed in the last episode t-tubes when they fall out that means the body has pushed them out on purpose and they no longer need these two t-tubes it was for those ear infections but for some reason for the fourth time they decided to put them back in in both ears and there's no other reason that would make them put them back in once they are pushed out. If she was like, there's no legitimate reason. No, it would have been that she's having such a buildup of earwax and constant ear infections. But through the documents, we can see she really only has an ear infection every six months, roughly at this point. And usually, as I discussed in the last episode, it has a perforation which usually is caused by a object being pushed through the eardrum, which would be causing that infection. And in this visit, uh, she has just a buildup of earwax. And so the T-tubes had fallen out and they decided to put them back in. Wow. For earwax. Good. Wow. Wow. I don't even know what to say to that. Like four times. Oh. <sighs> and during like I said, so th- so there's no there's no infection or perforations at this point. It's just earwax. Yep. Why would they even put it in for earwax? They wouldn't. They would say just clean your kids' ears with a warm washcloth often, and maybe find Did- out why there's a buildup of earwax. But it wasn't like her ear was just draining massive amounts of earwax. It was just she had a moderate uh, amount of earwax in the one side. But they decided to replace both of the T-tubes. And then this is when they start considering her to get her tonsillectomy and to start talking about more Botox and more 
dental caries and dental rehab. Yeah, more Botox. That's what that's what the kid needs. More more fucking Botox. <laughs> mm-hmm. Unbelievable. Yeah, I just really. So she, and she's fifteen at this point, and that's that's that is her actual. In this one, that is her actual age. She is fifteen at this point. No, she wouldn't. Yeah, two thousand seven. Um. Yeah, she's fifteen. That that's the accurate okay. age. Okay. So yeah, no, she's fifteen. Okay. I mean, fifteen year olds. Good... No, fifteen year olds <laughs> don't get ear tubes replaced four times. Well, they don't get ear tubes put in at all at that point. Yeah, that's not normal. No, it is not. And I don't know if they just due to her small stature and the way that she acted they assumed that she would be more like a disabled child and so okay but there's no excuse that you would keep replacing t-tubes when there was no actual problem other than they're falling out which is just the body is pushing them out because they do not need them yeah you know this this is the thing that this one makes me the one of the most mad and I, and I know it's so stupid because it, it's so it's probably one of the minor things that happened but for me who fought for years and years and years to get my child tubes put in and you know when she was little tiny tiny um and ha- and my daughter now has permanent hearing loss because they refused to put the tubes in until I literally lost it, you know, in an office. And the the doctor that I was seeing that time finally was like, Oh my God, I'm so sorry. You should have had these. This is what upsets and boggles my mind. Here we are regular people. We can't get shit. Christine and I talked about this before, you know, about the, about the, uh, the different, you know, pain medications and things that she's on. I can't get tubes for my kid that needs them, but here's this kid over here who her mom's had them replaced four times in, in a what two year period now. I mean, yep. <laughs> yeah. It, it's, a, it's amazing what she was able to pull off and have done. I, I, I just can't believe all these medical professionals, nobody, there was nobody that, that said, wait a minute, I'm not going to do this. There's no reason for this. Well, Why would that- I put tubes back? Well, and I'll explain throughout this discussion of Missouri that there are several times doctors state that the impression of the scans is normal. There is no logical reason. This child hasn't had any seizures, but I'm increasing the dose of this medication or I'm planning this surgery. And still nothing has ever been done to these doctors. And there are hundreds of doctors throughout these documents (sighs) that say there was nothing wrong but recommend this. And I don't know how you can do that as a medical professional. I know for myself, that would be something unheard of. You don't do a surgery or unnecessary scans when it's not medically needed. It causes damage. The amount of radiation and sedation that this girl has had in such a short period of time too, it can Right. damage her for the rest of her life yeah i mean well we talked about that before of that titania and i talked about whether her, we be, whether we believe she'll ever be able to have children or not because with all the radiation and everything her reproductive organs could be completely just trashed mm-hmm. you know along with the medications and things that she took that she didn't need you know i mean so right because um, besides for every surgery she had she was under sedation for every <laughs> single mri she had they she was put under sedation and that was at the request of Didi. We talked about that before, yep. right? That was yep. at the request of Didi because she said that she was panicky and anxiety. Yeah, anxiety. <laughs> but I call bullshit. <laughs> I call bullshit. Yeah. I call bullshit. Yep. <laughs> the first one is on 4 3 of 07. She's seen mm-hmm. at Children's Mercy Cardiac Center. Her last name is spelled with an E at the end, and her date of birth is in 1993 then okay the next document over she is seen in the ent clinic at children's mercy and this is on 4 9 of 07 so just six days later and now her name still that e but her date of birth is in 91 
six days later at the same hospital. Yeah, the revolving birth dates is just insane in this. I mean, it's it's so bad, guys, that when you look at a document um, within the file itself of a specific doctor, it may have four or five different birth dates in there and ages. It, well, definitely, because on that same document going down, it's the date is 10-9 of 07, and mm-hmm. now our date of birth is back to 93. Right. And we're still at Children's Mercy. So within a year, she's got different birth dates, different spellings of her name. Right. Um, and then my favorite is when they the, when they freaking like uh, it says a specific date of her birth. But then if you read the actual notes, it's a totally they're like, this kid is 12 years old. No, if you read the date, it, she's this is not 12 years old. <laughs> <laughs> yep, She's 19. She's 23. 20, she's 14. She's- She's 12. I'm like, yeah, okay. It just okay. Waits back and forth. Yeah. yeah. Don't go anywhere. The Good Wives will be right back. Okay, guys. You ready to hear how to make Springfield cashew chicken? Here it goes. Who cannot love fried chicken and sauce? <laughs> well, the first thing you want to do is you want to cut your chicken breast into one inch cubes. Prepare it to fry using the egg mixture and flour. Don't forget to season it by adding some Cajun spices. Once the chicken is fried, keep it in a warm oven to keep it fresh. The next step is the cashew sauce. Mm, mm, mm. You want to take three cups of water and whisk in your cornstarch. You want to do your chicken bouillon cubes. You want your oyster sauce and just a dash of white pepper. Put it in a saucepan and simmer it over a medium heat until it becomes thick. Once it becomes thick, you want to add your um, cashews to the mixture. Once the sauce is done it's, and it's nice and thick, you want to take a, a plate, put the fried chicken over a bed of jasmine rice, pour the cashew sauce over the chicken, and sprinkle with a little green onions before you serve it. And oh my goodness, this is probably one of the best Chinese recipes I've ever eaten. Thanks, Li Long and Gi, for the recipes. another great recipe. For the full recipe that was shared tonight, join us at our exclusive membership club at www.patreon.com slash true crime wives. Then, oh, then we go on to August of 07. And this is where I started talking about where she has these scans over and over and over again. This is another MRI of brain, total spine, and her pretty much they did her whole body. Do, the diagnosis for the reason for this was the muscular dystrophy. And they do it with sedation. But the result of that MRI is normal. Normal. So what were they looking? For? So what were they looking for? Uh, looking for something wrong with her spinal cord. Looking for possibly tumors. Looking for an abnormality in her brain or in the muscle growth of her legs. Anything like it was pretty much kind of like one of those full body scans, but more looking at the MRI based. Mm-hmm. But the, but the actual the actual um, referral or prescription for that MRI was diagnosis muscular dystrophy. Yep even though there was never a diagnosis other than from Dee Dee. But that's what they put and on And here I go today. again. Let me just drop my pen again. Like, <laughs> mm-hmm. And then wow. 
just I've never I mean never ever have I been able to walk into a doctor's office and tell the doctor what was wrong with my son and this is it and this is what you're gonna do and this is the medication I, I want <laughs> yeah give it to I've, tried to, I've, I've tried to tell a doctor I know exactly what the hell is wrong with me that doctor looked at me and said well I'm far, far be for me to say this ma'am but I'm the doctor yeah. Yeah. like you know I mean yes. What what's that saying? Please don't confuse your Google search with my medical degree. <laughs> I say that all the time. I mean, we just, well, like seriously, are we just looking shit up on WebMD at this point and going, yeah, that sounds I good? I think that's what this is. Like maybe she had a medical encyclopedia at home that was flipping pages. Well, we know she had that. We we yeah. that was found in the house. There was t- tons of them. There was like um, muscular dystrophy for dummies. Oh my god! <laughs> like, <laughs> no, they were. It was found. No, there was lots that of those books found in her house. Books found. found. Literally must make. Yeah. Oh, well. A month later, she's seen again at uh, St. John's Regional in the neurology clinic. This time, she does not have an E at the end of her name, and her birth date is in '93. And she's a 14-year-old patient with a past history of epilepsy, and she was referred for an EEG. It was a 40-minute EEG, but during the recording, there were no abnormalities. Is that same month? Uh, Gypsy is seen at Mercy again, and this is for a pediatric, pediatric ECG analysis. So this is when they check her heart um, because huh? it was said that she had a heart murmur. Um, but the document shows that she does not have a heart murmur. It is the exact scan. It's on 4307 um, that she does not have a heart murmur at all. Her heart is regular sinus rhythm. The murmur is not confirmed. And yet it still gets charted? Yep. And does it get treated? <laughs> At this point, no, it's just charted. charted as a murmur. How? I can't. I, I swear to God, I can't begin to tell you how many times I dropped my pencil <laughs> or smacked my head reading these things because it just, the, it, it floors me. I, yeah, Normal. No yeah, let's keep going. Normal. Let's put her in surgery. Normal. Let's give her another medication. Normal. Let's up that medication. <laughs> it's just, it, 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 I really have a problem with the doctors. Like, I, I do too. The more and more, over three years, the more and more I've seen this. Yeah, you know, I understand Gypsy played her part. Dee Dee played her part. They were convincing. What the fuck ever. Beckerman, I believe, was in on it. I kind of feel it. Steele knew more than he should have because he, how could he have seen her as much as he did and not have a fucking clue? But these doctors, I just, I, I, I'm mad that nobody has held them accountable. I'm mad that they did all of this to, you know, Gypsy and caused all of this. And, you know, now they, they've ruined all... <laughs> all these lives from this, you know, because what, because they couldn't be bothered to actually do their jobs. Pretty much. Yeah. It, oh. it makes me so angry because right now there's this like movement against big pharma and the medical industry. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I'm a big believer in science and medicine. And this right, right here is something that gives people an, a reason to say, well, I don't trust doctors because they give medications that they don't need to give and they do surgeries on people just for money. And like, th- this is this type of thing that makes me so angry because look how many doctors were involved here and not one of them actually, even though we see it in the notes, suspicion of Munchausen's norm, all these normal test results, not one of these medical professionals were willing to stand up and say, wait a minute, you know what? I'm not going to perform surgery. No, I'm not going to prescribe this medication. And you know what? I'm going to report you to everybody I can because something is wrong here. Not one of these people had it in them to, to see something is wrong and I'm going to do something about it. it it's crazy. In the course of this girl's 23 years of life, she had to have seen thousands of people. I'm not just talking doctors. I mean, yeah. nurses and social workers and, yes. you know, caseworkers and, and doctors and mandated emergency technicians reporters. and lab supporters. All of these ra- mandate, right, mandated reporters that no one reported. 
In fact, the guy, the one person who actually writes Munchausen in her, in her thing. Now, that's not the only time that the word Munchausen or malingering is used, but it is the one time that it's actually identified completely. But there is a lot of times where they do say, ah, uh, patient seems to be, you know, fabricating or malingering or whatever. And those piss me off. But yeah. the one time the one guy puts it in there, then, you know, he does nothing like it just it, in his, in his reasoning and, is that he didn't think he'd be believed. Well, I don't give a shit whether you think you'd be believed or not. Right. This is a exactly. child's fucking life. Right. You're a mandated reporter for a reason. Even if you're a doctor, so your word is held probably at the most accountable. And if you believe that a child is being purposefully inflicted surgeries and pain and medication, then you are mandated to report it to help save that child's life. Whether it's going to be believed or not, once you report it, then it's not your potential problem. Then it's the social workers and the police to, and the criminal aspect. But then you've at least done your job. If you hadn't reported, I mean, you did not do your job. Where the hell is the Hippocratic Oath in this? They're thrown out the window at this point. <laughs> yeah, you yeah. just throw it out the window like, ah, it doesn't fucking matter. I don't care. Well, I mean, she seems happy. So, well, hey, you know, she's she's fine. She's happy. Well, she's dying in front of my face, but she's happy and I don't give a shit. So when I don't know whether, you know, there's all of these documents because it was a little bit ago. We're all on paper. So he writes this on this one page. Munchausen by proxy goes in a file, goes in the folder, then it goes just in a filing cabinet and shoveled away. Because that she doesn't see but him he anymore. Went so far, but he went so far as to contact the doctors in Louisiana, where she had told them that the do- all the records were fucking lost. He finds out, nope, they're not lost. He gets a freaking copy. He has that copy. He talks to the freaking two two of the different doctors and finds out that she never had muscular dystrophy. And then, oh, she doesn't come back, so she's not my fucking problem. Is that what it is? Yep. Yeah. Pretty out much. of sight, out of mind. I mean, yes. What who the f- fuck are you right. to do this to a kid? It is out of sight, out of mind, because I feel like the reason that she continued to see Steele and Beckerman is because they tolerated the malingering and the Munchausen. Yes. They were okay they, they, with they it. They played along with it. They played along with it. That's why They we, fed into it. They played along with it. That's why we see them repeatedly over and over and over again in these files versus these other people. Because as And I have right. the pages where it says that Dee Dee called to request the records from this physician and from Mm -hmm. this year. Mm -hmm. And once she saw, you know, an issue, she never went back again. Yeah, any question, she doesn't go back. But she continues to go back to Beckerman and Steele, so she don't seem to have a problem with them. Right. Yeah. Money in the pocket. And they don't seem to have a problem with her either. Money in the pocket. (sighs) Okay, well, we've got to move on because, I mean, we could talk about this part (laughs) for days. And we got to get through these documents for these for people. I'm sorry, folks. We do get very heated when we're talking about medical. It just yeah. it really it, it boggles our mind. And I think every single time there's never going to be a conversation. We're like, okay, yeah, that's fine. It, it's always going to be this 20 minute rant. Like, you know? <laughs> so, all right. So what we got next, Colleen? So what we got next is on five fifteen of 07. Discover unbeatable deals and convenience at your neighborhood family fair supermarkets. Score exclusive deals, earn rewards, join clubs, and clip digital coupons for extra savings all in one place. Our exclusive offers bring savings straight to your card. Explore a wide range of local products that support your community. With easy pickup and delivery options, saving time and grocery shopping has never been easier. Family Fair is all about making your grocery experience easy and affordable and your one-stop shop for all your grocery needs. Family Fair, in your neighborhood. If you're getting ready to do your holiday shopping at Sephora, Nike, or Neiman Marcus, make sure you head to Rakuten first. Rakuten helps you save big on whatever you're buying for the holidays. Getting gifts for friends and family? Get some cash back for yourself. Plus, save on festive home decor, party outfits, and that trip to see your fam. With Rakuten, you can earn cash back on top of the biggest sales of the season, so you get the most savings. And it's easy to use. Just start your shopping at Rakuten.com or use the Rakuten app, and you'll get your cash back payments through PayPal or check. 
Rakuten partners with over 3,700 stores. The stores pay Rakuten for sending them shoppers, and Rakuten shares the money with you as cash back. Join for free at Rakuten.com and get the Rakuten app. That's R-A-K-U-T-E-N. See in detail a document of a history and physical. Uh, she is now 13 years old, so she's gone back to here, so the birth date is in 93. And she's scheduled for a BMTT placement, um, and this is for the tympanostomy tubes again. Um, she was treated for with antibiotics for an ear infection. She's having more ear infections now, though there we have no documentation that she is actually having those ear infections. Of course not. Uh, But then they talk about her past medical, surgical, and birth history, saying that the patient was transferred care from New Orleans, where most of the records were lost after Hurricane Katrina, that Gypsy is a paraplegic from birth and in a wheelchair. Yeah. Right. Right. That's where that story started. Right. That she has only shadows in the right eye, but vision in the left eye is good with correctional lenses. Uh, hearing deficiencies, but the spe- speech is fine. That she's on the CPAP at night, that she's got epilepsy and grand mal seizures occurring approximately one time a month. Uh, that she has asthma, for which she requires multiple inhaled, inhaled steroids. Uh, that she was treated for acute lymphocytic leukemia at the age of five years old for one year and has been in remission since. That she has muscular dis- dystrophy. That mom believes the type is a limb girdle. So the doctor is not saying the type of muscular dystrophy. But mom has now diagnosed this muscular dystrophy. Yeah, because mom knows how to di- diagnose muscular dystrophy. I mean, she must have done a biopsy at fucking home or something. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they talk about the multiple submandibular gland removal for the hypersalivation and muscle biopsies. That That heart murmur was documented uh, that uh, cardiology even said that it was not really a heart murmur. There's a history of mild chest discomfort and mom plans for making a follow-up appointment for that and that her lower limbs periodically become cold and blue, but one leg occasionally swells, but just the one leg. Um, It says that Dixie was born four weeks prematurely. But mom is unsure of the prenatal course due to memory loss after the car accident. She does recall that Gypsy had a failure to thrive. Wait a minute, 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 wait a minute. So you're telling me she doesn't recall something because of memory loss because of the car accident. But we're going to go ahead and take her at her word for everything she fucking says. Yep. She just told you that she doesn't remember shit from a car accident. But, oh, I mean, she should know when she would. Yep. I believe it's it. Liter- I believe it says it. it. Mom has memory loss, but mom says that she's got uh, this muscular dystrophy. <laughs> oh, no. Unreal. Um, and that, F- that she had the failure to thrive soon after birth, but it's not sure if the paraplegia was present at birth or after a fever episode. But just a paragraph ago, that doctor said the paraplegia was from birth. Yeah. Birth. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Unreal. Yeah. And then in her own <sighs> review of symptoms, everything is normal. Your systems are all normal. Neuro, cardiac, respiratory. You know, it kind of, I, have you ever seen Princess Bride? Like, and, you know, when Vassini, you know, is talking and, and uh, the other guy is like, you keep using that word. I do not think you know what that, I do not what I think that word means what you think it means. That's what I feel like watching this. Like, you keep using normal. Do you, do you know what normal means? Do you, you, obviously you don't know what normal means. Obviously you don't know what any of this means. Are you even a fucking doctor? Or are we, which, which doctors at this point? You know, I mean, are we like seeing like the, the witch doctor on the side of the road? Like, really? Are we in a real fucking facility? Did we enter the twilight zone? Like, what in the ever loving F is happening here? Yeah, it's that they're taking a mom with memory loss at her word for every single thing. The mom every. diagnosed the type of muscular dystrophy. That doesn't tell you that it's Munchausen by proxy at all. No, no. <laughs> not, not at all. 
Mm. Not at all. It doesn't tell you that something is, you know, it's like something is a foot at the quickie mart here. Hello. Yep. Hello. <laughs> Does not add up. One of these things is not like the other. Let me guess. Let me guess. I might know the word here. Normal. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Ding, 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 ding. You are the winner. But yet then the rest of her chart at uh, St. John's and all Mercy Clinics are going to say that she's got epilepsy. Uh, but this is where we get. So this doctor who did this test is Flasterstein. <laughs> and this is what we were just talking. Because the, a month later, he writes that her on 11-16 of 2007, he writes that her brain MRI and spinal MRIs is essentially normal. normal. The everything is normal. Her deep tendon reflexes are normal, including her lower extremities, which means she does not have, she's not paralyzed. And at the time, for a matter of complexityness, she is referred to have some conduction studies with an EMG. And then that's when he did the EEG as well. Analyze, this is his words. Analyzing all the facts, and after talking to her previous pediatrician, there is a strong possibility of Munchausen by proxy, with maybe some underlying unknown etiology for an explanation of her symptoms. A day after her visit, the mother called to report that Gypsy Rose mentioned arm numbness and back pain. As previously mentioned, she will be referred to have an EMG, and we will proceed accordingly. I will update you with the results. She is scheduled for a follow visit in my office in six months. Sincerely, Bernardo Flasterstein. Now, who does he send that to? I don't even know where he sent this to. I think it goes to Steele, right? Yes, Steele. There it is. Yep. He says it. For anybody counting, that's the 15th time I've dropped my pen tonight. <laughs> <laughs> he says it. Everything was normal. She's got deep tendon reflexes. She's, she's, uh, uh, all of her scans are normal. He says it in his own words. Munchausen by proxy is the explanation. So what is a, what is a deep tender reflex? I mean, I think I know what it is, but I, I don't know if everybody else knows what it is. So what is a deep tender reflex? So everyone thinks of like your reflexes that kind of like automatically go off. The deep tendon reflexes are assessed using a reflex hammer and mm -hmm. tapping in a specific spot. So that way the muscle will actually conduct with the nerve on its own. So sure. in, if you can visualize when you're sitting at the edge of the table, doctor puts the hammer to your knee mm -hmm. and your leg just automatically kind of kicks up. But there are deep tendon reflexes, not just in the knees or reflexes in the arms, hands, feet, ankles. And in his notes, he performed all the spots for deep tendon reflexes on her lower extremities and her arms. And they were all normal. And that's something she can't fake because that's a, that's a, just a reflex, right? right? So she can't fake that. Yep, you can't fake so, it. And so if she had muscular dystrophy, what would have happened when he did those? Most likely they would not have activated. It would have been an absent deep tendon reflex. And it definitely depends mm -hmm. on the type of muscular dystrophy and the severity. But at this point, it's been diagnosed right. that she, well, diagnosed in quotation marks, that she's got epilepsy, mm. muscular dystrophy with the limb girdle, and that she's paralyzed. And so all of those she should not have as active of deep tendon reflexes, especially in every single spot. Hmm. And now even after all this, he orders an EMG, which I remember having, and I was over the age of 21. It was painful. And it's not something I would have wanted to have done if I didn't absolutely need to have it done. So even after the Munchausen's by proxy is in his notes, he still sends her for an EMG. Yes. And what would be the reason for that? Would that be so that he could further figure out the, the, the Munch that it is Munchausen by proxy? Is that what he's trying to prove there? Right. Because the EMG would test nerve conduction. Um, and so when... Okay. Usually people will have those done when they think about carpal tunnel. So it's done in their uh, forearm. Mm -hmm. And she would have had it done on her arms and her legs. And there would be no way to fake that. It's again, those a nerve test. Right. And, you know, she can keep her legs still all she wants, but the nerves are going to do what they're going to do, but it's painful. 
and her EMGs come back normal. No, I could see if he did something after that and and using it as proof of Munchausen's by proxy, but nothing was done. No, he doesn't do so anything was, with that data. So she was put through another painful procedure for no reason again. Correct. And the result after Munchausen's was mentioned. Yep, and he doesn't do anything with this data. Just gets filed away. You know, screw fucking killing Dee Dee. I would have wanted to murder all these doctors. <laughs> it's I mean, they are lucky that she didn't just go on like a rampage. Like oh, you know, I could see her just going postal and going into a hospital and just laying waste to everybody in the whole freaking place. Like, God bless. Well, and then that in the same month span. She's back and forth at Children's Mercy with some phone calls. And it's not anything very important, but it's just showing the different name changes again. Adding the E. She's uh, spelling gypsy a little differently. Different dates of birth. Um, and I'm gonna, this is the hard thing for me. As a parent, this is going to be all in one month in one month she's going under an eeg she's in a 9 14 of 07 she is getting her eyes checked on 9 24 of 27 she has an mri with sedation that shows nothing is wrong and then three days later on 9 27 of 07 she has another mri with sedation of the same thing her head and her upper body she you, there's the same things were tested and three days later. That alone would be enough to warp her freaking brain. Yeah. And sedation. Absolutely. Sedation right. three days later. How can you do that to your child? I, I don't know. I, I, I don't know, but I also don't know. I, my I, I look at my son and I can't imagine... Saying, no, you can't play baseball. No, you can't. We're going to the doctor today. We're going to the doctor today. We're going to the doctor today. You're today. Like, I can't <laughs> imagine doing that to him his entire life and making him miss out on everything and make him pretty much live the majority of his life sitting in doctor's offices and hospitals and waiting rooms and waking up in a recovery room three times a week. Two t- like, it, it's mind blowing to me as a parent. Yeah. yeah. I mean, especially like I'm a parent. Okay. You know, when my kids were little, we didn't have a lot of money and I felt guilty as shit because, you know, my friend's kids are doing ballet and my friend's kids are, and my kids didn't get to do all that stuff. Okay. We, we were poor. We, we did with what we could, you know, um, and because we lived in a, a very expensive state, you know, and we lived in California when the girls were little. That's one of the reasons why we moved to Arizona. Uh, so my kids missed out on things, you know. I mean, we skimped to do the daddy-daughter dances um, to make sure that, that, you know, she was – my daughter always wore a dress that the other daughter had worn. You know, I mean, it's, it's one of those things. Like, I can't imagine if I would have given my ch- children anything I could have. I would have taken – and any time my children were in pain, I would have taken that pain for them of every day – and five times on Sunday, you know, and taking it away and taking that pain for them. And here is this, this mom, these doctors, these social workers, these nurses watching this kid go through this and ain't nobody give a damn. Like, and I know that's part of the Munchausen by proxy. We've talked about that before. And Diana will be talking about that some when we, when we talk with her about the psychological aspects of some of this stuff in Munchausen by proxy. But, um, you know, I know that that's a part of it is that it's a, it's a, lack of empathy for being concerned for something that would be that would be worrisome to a child you know or that they would be scared of doing a procedure whatever they have no empathy for that but this is just right it's it's insane and this is such a weird case like I go back and forth whether I believe it's Munchausen by proxy truly or whether I just believe it was malingering for fraud because in a lot of the Munchausen by proxy cases that we see that's really Munchausen by proxy they're making their kids really 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 truly 
physically ill. There is no known reasons for why they are physically ill. There's no reason why they're vomiting profusely. You know, their sodium is out of the roof or they are, they're, you know, they're having asthma attacks that are crazy. And, and these are visibly seen and, and happen. You know, these are things that actually happen. In this case, though, I mean, it, it's not like that. It's just, well, let's just do everything under the sun to her. But hey, it's all fucking normal. So who cares? You know, I mean, yeah, it's, it, it's, it's a really odd thing. It is very. It, it only... Go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, it is, it's very strange that all these scans, you know, they're all coming back normal, but they continue putting it in her medical history that she has things that they already proved that she doesn't have. Doesn't have. Right. Right. And see, this is where I was upset with both, you know, I, we spoke with, um, we spoke with Dr. Feldman and we spoke with Louisa Lasher and we're going to speak with a couple more um, Munchausen by proxy experts. But this is where when I talked to Dr. Feldman, I thought he had looked at this case that he had maybe talked to Gypsy blah, 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 because, you know, he's like, it's the rare, it's one of the rarest ones. And, blah, blah. and then come to find out he hadn't. He's never looked at the case files. He's never talked to Gypsy. So I have a problem with them saying what they're saying because they're only going on what they think they know at this point. They're not even looking at it to see what is in the file. I mean, yes, it presents classically as one thing, but right when you medically look at all these files it, it's another when you story. medically look at these files it's not just munchausen by proxy it's not just malingering it's fucking bizarre it's, it's strange and it's beyond bizarre because you want to look at like like we talk about lacey spears you know her child was physically ill you could see it. There were tests done. There were things. He was bleeding from his eyes. He's bleeding from his ears. He's done nothing here. No, 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 no. And even they dropped the ball many, many times. They could have saved that child's life a million fucking times. 9,000 people questioned things in that case. And no, and still nothing happened. But this case is just odd. I've never seen a doctor just be like, you know what, ma'am? I know you came in here and you thought you had a bladder infection, but the things didn't show that you have a bladder infection, but we'll just go ahead and give you antibiotics anyway. Yep. <laughs> yeah, never. Like, that's what this... Never. Never, ever, ever. <laughs> Don't go anywhere. The Good Wives will be right back. What if you could be a true crime detective right from the comfort of your own home? Dispatch is an interactive serial mystery that unfolds over several months. Imagine the experience of an escape room in your own home, a new kind of escape called Dispatch. It's a subscription box that is a step apart from everyday entertainment, better than a book, more engaging than television. Think of it as an immersive mystery where you wear the detective hat. The story begins with the first delivery, or dispatch, if you will, in it, you'll find physical clues that lead you to the web and back to the real world to unravel a mysterious crime. Grab a friend, the whole family, and your thinking cap and get ready to put your heads together for one mind-bending ride as an additional details are revealed with every package. Check out the description for a special link to grab your dispatch box today and start your own true crime detectiveing. We absolutely love hearing from our listeners, and we'd like to invite you to send us a question for us to answer or a case you'd like us to cover. You can do this in two different ways. You can send us a message right here at anchor.fm slash truecrimewives, and we might play it live in one of our next episodes, or you can drop us an email at goodwivesdish, that's D-I-S-H, at gmail.com. We look forward to hearing from you. But an interesting note in 2008, mm -hmm. and then here, I want to take a pause because I just want to fact check this. What the hell okay. is her middle name? 
Alcide. Okay, so Alcida. Gypsy Rose Alcide Blanchard. Okay, I just want to make sure that that was a real thing and not just an extra middle name. No, it's a family name of some sort. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. Alcide. It's A L C I D E, yeah? Yeah. A L C I D A yeah. in this document. Alcida? Yeah. Um, it goes, and then it, cha- then it goes back and forth because I've seen Alcide as well, A-L-I-C. That's what I was thought. I thought it was, because I never see her middle name in documents. And so I don't mm-hmm. know if they did this, so that way it was a different file. I well, no, it is, it's, it's on her, it's on her birth certificate as Alcide. No, I know, I'm saying the spelling. Yeah. So if they yeah, put this right. in some more different file, like, oh, it's similar, but the middle name is different kind of thing. Yeah. Because the, now her birthday is in 95. <laughs> so, no, I'm gonna go with that. Now we're going into f- 2008, and <laughs> we've only made it to 2008 at this point, guys. <laughs> Luckily, things kind of I've streamlined and stuff because so a lot of the same thing happened the next couple of years. But it does it. but then just a few days later, <sighs> she is admitted for another eye surgery, and yeah. on all of her physical exams it's within defined limits within normal limits that why don't more infant formula companies use organic grass-fed whole milk instead of skim why don't more infant formula companies use the latest breast milk science why don't more infant formula companies run their own clinical trials why don't more infant formula companies use more of the proteins found in breast milk why don't more infant formula companies have their own factories instead of outsourcing their manufacturing we wondered the same thing so we made Byheart, an infant formula company on a mission to get a lot closer to the most super superfood on the planet, breast milk. Our patented protein blend has more of the important and most abundant proteins actually found in breast milk. We're the first and only U.S. made formula to use organic grass-fed whole milk, not skim. We even conducted the largest clinical trial by a new infant formula company in a quarter century with clinically proven benefits like easier digestion, less spit up, and softer poops versus a leading infant formula. And we make our own formula in the USA and our very own factories in Iowa, Oregon, and Pennsylvania. Byheart, a better formula for formula. Learn more at byheart.com. Every day my employees get scam emails. I wanted to protect my business and clients, so I checked out CISA's Secure Our World. They've got four simple ways we can protect our businesses from online threats. Learn more at cisa.gov forward slash secure our world. It's got great capillary refill in the upper and lower extremities. So that whole swelling and cool leg mm-hmm. thing, she doesn't actually yeah. have. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Her cranial nerves are intact. Um but there's something interesting in the social history, and this is in 2009, it says lives with mom and cat, and she's homeschooled, and she's in several playgroups. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, a cat, a cat. Yep. She's got all these freaking allergies, and she's, you know, that's Cats fine. fine. She's got a cat. Nobody, asks, <laughs> nobody, says, nobody says anything about yep. that. No, no, that's fine. fine. But fine. it says that that's she's fine. in several playgroups, and that mom volunteers at Ronald McDonald. She's 16 years old. What fucking playgroups is she in? Right. I've never heard that she went to any playgroups. Okay. Neither to be have fair, I. To be fair, in Louisiana, she did participate in the gumbo games. I mean. And she and she did go to the Ronald McDonald House games and things like that. But that was in Louisiana. And I did spoke. I spoke. I can't even say words. And I did speak with one of the girls who participated in those with her. Um, and she was lovely. Uh, she just absolutely loves Gypsy to death. And um, she has fond, very fond memories of Gypsy and Dee Dee. And it broke her heart, like to, to know that here she is, she had, you know, she was in a wheelchair. She had all these different things herself. And here's this kid that she thought was just like her. And she's not just like her. Yeah, that's, and that was devastating. That's gotta be heartbreaking. So she did participate yeah. in Louisiana, but not there was nothing ever after that that we've seen. Right, this is or in heard any of them refer to. Right. And so, okay, so 2009. I'm horrible at math. Somebody tell me how old she is at this point. Really, almost 20. 2001. Yeah, uh, it's close. Okay, to, like 18. Even, 18. 18 and so we're thinking okay she's 18 even at 16 let's say she's 16 but no or no wait a minute no our file says 95 so that's not right either um 
So, but she's a kid, but she's a teenager. What teenager is in a play group? Like, right. And we have no record, any documentation that she had any socialization groups like that whatsoever. It was, she was in, you know, different, you know, fundraising things and getting awards and whatnot, but not like, you know, going to the Mm -hmm. mom and me weekly play group kind of thing. Nothing. Right. We're not at Jamboree freaking doing, you know, toddler time. I mean. Right. (sighs) But then we go on. And in 2010, this is just an, uh, something from steel that on December 7th, 2010, now Gypsy's last name is with an E again with her middle name having the A at the end. Her birth date's 1995. And I'm sorry I have to keep saying that because it just keeps changing every record. But now right. <laughs> Gypsy is a 17-year-old with a history of muscular dystrophy who prevents for evaluation of her G-tube because she heard a pop uh, and had some abdominal pain. So they're thinking maybe the balloon of her G-tube popped. And so they took out the old one. There was nothing actually wrong with it. They put a new one back in. Uh, But then under her review of symptoms, it's just another time it says that negative except as documented in the history. So there's nothing actually wrong, but they take what was written in her medical history as that's it. And under her allergies, in many of the uh, histories and pages that we have, it says that she's got an iodine allergy, which is pretty much impossible because of all the amount of iodine that she has had put on her. And IV contrast, because they say contrast dye. Um, But it says that she has no new allergies. No reactions have documented. No reactions to iodine. But yet they keep that uh, iodine under her allergic reaction with swelling. Even though the next paragraph it says no reactions documented to the iodine. I don't know. You just said she doesn't, but you're writing that she does. It's just you know, the, the mind of Dee Dee just... It, okay, I'm a writer. I sit and write fantasy and fiction and shit every day, all day. Okay, that's, that's what I do. I would never be able to think up all this random shit. The shit that she thinks up. Like, that's another reason why I, I'm... I've, the Munchausen by proxy doesn't doesn't really fit for me because like in in most of these cases it's a very specific thing that these kids keep coming in with like it's continuously ear infections and vomiting or it's continuously the spiking this whatever there is it's not just oh let's give her 95,000 things and 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 oh today she's got an iodine allergy no yesterday she didn't have that i you know she didn't have that yesterday but she's got it now and and it just it's just the amount of how does one even come up with all of that well and who keeps it straight in their fucking head well i don't know because then and i don't know if i've mentioned it already i know we've talked about it just a little bit ago but Literally from Dr. Steele, he writes a prescription fax for to please provide a soft helmet for a Gypsy Rose Blanchard with her. For what? With the E at the end of her name, but her birth date is back in 91. And he hand wrote it. Hand wrote it to provide a helmet. And what would be the reasons that someone would need a soft helmet? If they, or does he give reasons why he needs why, why she needs the soft helmet? No, there's no actual diagnosis for needing the helmet. A child or adult might need a helmet if they were hitting themselves in the head or falling a lot and had like hemophilia or bashing their head on the wall, which can happen in a lot of mental cases or severe mental issues. But th- this is in 2009. There are, and there's you know, no explanation. No, and there's been no recorded history of Gypsy self-harming herself. But for some reason, she needs a helmet now. 
Can you imagine what went on in the house the day that that was brought up? <laughs> hey, that was probably a, a big fight that day. I can just imagine Gypsy like, fighting. Absolutely not. I'm not wearing a helmet. You can't make me wear a helmet. I won't wear it. Maybe that's why she changed her to the fucking bed, you know, like put on the helmet. Yeah, because I'm sure we, we would have seen lots of pictures with that helmet if Gypsy wore it. Right. I'd be like, I will sit in this wheelchair, but you cannot make me wear that helmet. <laughs> helmet. Not wearing that helmet. You can take that helmet and you can shove it up your fat ass. <laughs> I mean, literally, like that. I, I just can't imagine. And I'm like thinking about like Dee Dee trying to shove it on her head and Gypsy's like freaking out. I mean, yeah. Uh, yes. This poor girl. <laughs> and then we wonder why she kills her mom. I mean, I, it just. Well, and. Granted, don't get me wrong. I don't condone it. I believe that there was other reasons. I don't think that the medical stuff is why she killed her mom. I mean, it played into it. Don't get me wrong. Yes. But it's not why she killed her mom. It's not the, it's not the, you know, it's not what they made it out to be as to why. Like, and that's one of the things with Mike, we know that I've said it before is that he didn't have all of what we have. He only had lab reports and follow-up visits when, when we first started this quest. So he concocted this whole, you know, story of this is why, you know, because that was something he could sell and he's a great defense attorney and that was wonderful and he did a good job. But I mean, now that we've seen all of this, it, you can tell that this is the sheer amount of this that that's not why she killed her mom because if she, if it had been it would have happened way sooner. no if you read the text messages between her and nick you it's a yeah. teenage girl wanting to have a boyfriend yeah. wanting the freedom that she knew she wasn't going to get the medical stuff definitely right. played into it and i don't believe for a second sure. that Dee was ever going to let her out or have a boyfriend or ruin mm-hmm. the scam yeah. Never. Yeah. But no, and I do believe it. And I do believe we're, and we're going to talk about this with Diana. We do believe that it was, it was quickly heading towards some sort of catalyst and either, you know, either something was going to happen where Gypsy was going to get killed because she wouldn't comply or, um, or it was going to start all over again. I mean, there is a story of them, you know, early 2015 and, um, Dee Dee's introducing her at Disneyland again to people as 12. Well, and I now going into that, I have a little surprise because I didn't realize there was another birthday involved here. And ooh, surprises. <laughs> no, right? No, no, nothing's a surprise anymore at this case. But right. on February 26th of 2010, Steele writes mm-hmm. another prescription to order another power wheelchair for repairs, but the diagnosis for this is that acute lymphoblastic leukemia, which is not the original leukemia that they diagnose. They have said in her records that it's lymphocytic leukemia, not lymphoblastic. So he writes lymphoblastic, but she had that at the age of five, according to her charts. This is in 2010. Why does she need a wheelchair now? And in this, it's no E at the end of her last name. But her date of birth is a little subject to question here because on the top of the record, it shows that her date of birth is 91. But he writes that her date of birth right underneath her name is 94. Have we even seen that before? No, I have not seen anybody write her birth date as 94. It's not... it. He literally, the document at the top says 1991, and he writes, hand writes, that her birth date is in 1994. And before he wrote 95, mm-hmm. and he's written 93, her chart says 91, now he's writing 94, and you got to tell me he doesn't know what the hell is going on? Oh, bullshit. Yeah, I call hell a bullshit. bullshit. Yeah. It, it... Well, at some point in time, I don't know where it happens, but there is an actual birth date of 2000. Well, and on this document, besides the last name, or I mean her date of birth, her last name is spelled differently on it. When he writes her name, there's no E, but the top of the document has an E. So there's nothing matching on this document, which in today's world would mean that this is a completely different patient. Stop, red light, epic will not let you pass. You cannot pass, go. Like, he hand wrote wrong information. 
And and you can see right below it, he does the same thing because they want to order a battery for that wheelchair. Um, and, and the thing is, is like if it was one time, two times, fuck, ten times, I would say maybe that was a mistake. Maybe he wrote it wrong. Maybe he thought ninety three and right note wrote ninety four. But no, this is this is blatant. Yeah. <sighs> Um, and I mean, just it, just the sheer amount of how many years was he her doctor? Over ten. Okay, so just the sheer amount of years that he saw her, wouldn't that be a red flag? Like, how is she only fourteen now? When I've been seeing her for this many years, and when I started seeing her, she was this age. Was it's impossible, right? You know, like, he's a magical time traveler. I, I don't expect the doctor to remember a birth date for every patient because they see so many people. But wouldn't that be a red flag? Like, wow, I've been seeing this kid for a really long time. How is she 14 still? Well, in all the documents, they write that this is my favorite mom and daughter patient. So clearly you may have to remember them. She is a little yeah. bit of a memorable person when you look at her. Oh, yeah. But I mean, it's clear that she did. he didn't start seeing her at fucking four. Clearly, yeah. She wasn't mm, mm, mm. either that or she was the biggest fucking four year old I've ever seen in my damn life. <laughs> Don't go anywhere. The good wives will be right back. Every great podcast needs a great website. Currently, our mother company, Mad Ginger Entertainment, is building their website using Bluehost. Bluehost is one of the best and most affordable web hosting platforms available. Plans start as low as $2.95 a month, and you can even integrate it with WordPress. So if you need your own website or affordable web hosting, grab our discount link in the description and get your podcast a bigger presence online at low, low costs. Cajun Mama Ty here with another French word of the day. As we continue our journey in the Gypsy and Dee Dee case, I find myself a little sad and happy at the same time, and if that makes any sense. I am happy. I'm, I am sad because we're moving on out of Louisiana into Missouri, then on to Wisconsin. But I'm happy because we're one step closer to finishing up this project and moving on to bigger and better cases. So I decided to use a, to find a French word that would be appropriate for us leaving one place and going to another. I was kind of confused and I couldn't think of a word. So I sat down with my dad and talked to him. He's fluent in Cajun French. I asked him, hey, dad, what do you think is a good word that I can teach the people out there in podcast land? He laughed. He said, the only word I can think of is allons. Allons means let's go. It's translated as let's go. It's used in the Cajun French uh, when a parent is ready to leave and they want to round up the family at any kind of event. So either mom or dad yell all on and all the kids know that it's time for them to leave. So all on good wives, let's head to Missouri and on to Wisconsin so we can finish up and move on to the next case. Well, guys, so this is the first half of the medical journey into Springfield. I, like we said in the opening, like we said earlier, you know, um, normal was a predominant word used in Gypsy's files. <laughs> and it becomes laughable at some point when you've looked at it as much as we have. And know that this is not the last time. 
you're gonna hear us say it normal <laughs> again oh, because by a long shot <laughs> we still have one whole more episode of medical and then when we're gonna talk about uh being in jail i'll talk about normal again mm-hmm. but in a different purpose but this just the first half guys yeah it's yeah. like the most it's it's the most times you're gonna hear the word normal in such an abnormal situation. Exactly, Christina. I think that is an amazing point. Exactly, because it's anything but normal. Normal. Is, mm-hmm. is, but I mean, in it, in it is normal. All the tests are normal, but it's not normal for them to do the things that they do based on these normal tests. Yeah, it's it's unreal. No matter how many times we go through it and we know what happened and we know what she had done, what surgeries, it's it's still hard to wrap your mind around it. It's really, really hard to wrap your mind around it, how nobody stood up for Gypsy. And right. that's and the thing. With No matter how I look at Gypsy now, after everything that we've learned and everything that we know, I still go back to that, that someone could have saved her a long time ago and we wouldn't be here talking about her right now. Absolutely. And nobody did. Not family, yes. not a friend, not a doctor, not a specialist. Like nobody, nobody stood up and said, absolutely not. I'm not going to do surgery on this girl. Right? And why are we recommending surgery? I'm going to report this. Why are doctors recommending a surgery that doesn't need to be done? They just continuously did what pretty much what Didi told them to do. Yeah. That's exactly yeah. what it was. That's it exactly what it was. Yep. And Next episode, you're going to actually get to get a couple uh, fun things, not just about Gypsy, but we're going to also talk about um, Dee Dee's health and how it gets portrayed in uh, media sources and what it really was, and also a special interview that we conducted with somebody that that saw one of the doctors that was not involved in this case, but the doctor was involved in the case, but the person that we've interviewed was not. And, but what they had to say about seeing that specific doctor. So that's going to be really interesting. So you'll want to tune in again for episode eight. Thanks so much for tuning in and dishing true crime with the good wives. Don't forget to join our Patreon member club to get the full recipe shared tonight, inside documents and pictures from the case bonus mini podcast episodes, live YouTube discussion, and an exclusive invitation to our discussion group on Facebook, and get some amazing Good Wives merch. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram at True Crime Wives. And for more inside information, check us out on YouTube at Murder by Design, where we're currently talking about a few different true crime cases from bullying murders to serial killers. We dish it all. Have a good one from the Good Wives, serving up true crime, one dish, at a time. Okay, round two. Name something that's not boring. A laundry? Ooh, a book club. Computer solitaire, huh? Ah, oh, sorry. We were looking for Chumba Casino. That's right. Chumbacasino.com has over 100 casino-style games. Join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. Chumbacasino.com. No purchase necessary. Full work limited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Lucky Land Casino, asking people, what's the weirdest place you've gotten lucky? Lucky? In line at the deli, I guess? Aha, in my dentist's office. More than once, actually. Do I have to say? Yes, you do. In the car, before my kid's PTA meeting. Really? Yes. Excuse me, what's the weirdest place you've gotten lucky? I never win and tell. Well, there you have it. You can get lucky anywhere, playing at LuckyLandSlots.com. Play for free right now. Are you feeling lucky? No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details.